The news of largest anything often gets people's attention. So how about one of the largest pterosaurs to ever saw the skies? What could be even better than that? Well, the largest pterosaur to saw the skies of South America. Presenting to you, Thanatos Dracon Amaru. Or is it pronounced Thanatos Dracon? Not too sure. But what I am sure of is it's known as the Dragon of Death. Which, I mean, wow. What a name for this flying reptile. I think we can all agree that it's definitely not the most welcoming name in the world. G'day ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host and in this video I'll be going over a more recent discovery of an impressively sized pterosaur that lived in the Cretaceous period approximately 80 million years ago in South America. This pterosaur is relatively new, with a paper dedicated to it being published only early last year. However, its remains were first discovered in 2018 from two well-preserved specimens and they've helped us know quite a bit about it. But first, let's get into why you lot pressed onto this video. For its size, it may not have been bigger than the infamous Quetzalcoatlus, but it still was an impressive pterosaur nonetheless. From the specimens discovered, its estimated wingspan measures between 7 to 9.2 meters, which I mean, that is enormous. It's practically the length of an Allosaurus. Just when you think this flying reptile couldn't get any bigger, it would have looked down upon you from 3.6 meters up. That's how tall this guy was. In terms of its weight, well, likely estimates place it around the 250 kilogram region. You may have expected a bit of a heavier weight on this creature due to its wingspan and height, but that just couldn't be the case. Without going overly deep into the science of it, creatures that can fly just can't be too heavy and they can't have thick bones. With a lighter weight, hollow bones and strengthened internal struts, it allows for these apexes of the skies to, well, be in the sky. In terms of fossil remains, most of it was discovered. Keyword being most. Arguably, the most important part was left out, the head. This has led to a couple of different depictions being made, but the most common seems to be with a thicker skull. And compared to its relatives, such as the Quetzalcoatlus, it seems to have a much thicker skull. But what family were these giant pterosaurs part of? Well, in this article by Leonardo David et al, they utilize a cladistic analysis to understand how Thanatos dracon is related to other flying reptiles. They've discovered that it belongs to a group called... Alright, this pronunciation is going to be rough, but as Darchidide. And within this group is part of a subgroup called the Quetzalcoatline, which no surprise, it's related to the Quetzalcoatlus. But Thanatos Dracon was found to be the oldest known member of this subgroup. In a broader context, the presence of this pterosaur hints at a fascinating ancient world, characterized by the unique ecological setting shaped by low gradient meandering rivers. These rivers in their leisurely course contributed to the formation of an extensive loose landscape that stretched across the region. It was within this expansive continental environment that Thanatos Dracon thrived. This immense flying reptile with its impressive wingspan was not a denizen of open oceans or coastal environments, but rather it made its home in the continental heartland. Its existence in the floodplain deposits of these meandering rivers suggests that it adapted to a life in an environment marked by seasonally shifting water levels, periodic flooding, and the rich resources offered by fertile floodplains. In terms of what it lived with as well as hunted, well, that still requires more studies. However, considering it lived with titanosaurs, carcodontosaurids, as well as numerous shift, turtles, crocs, and the numerous other dinosaurs, my hypothesis would be that these massive pterosaurs would have been opportunistic hunters. They would most likely have hunted juvenile dinosaurs as well as fish in the rivers. Although I can imagine that the Caracodontosaurids could have been potential predators to our dragon of death. This is mainly due to the fact that the pterosaurs would have been large but still lightweight, meaning that they couldn't really defend themselves. Anyways, we've reached the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed learning a bit more about these magnificent flying reptiles. As always, if you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment any future videos that you'd want to see. I'll catch you all next time. See ya.